Hey, welcome back to my Dusty Builder channel. My name's Tom. We installed this new water heater that happens to be a heat pump water heater, and it's working great. We're happy with it, but the water smells, and we're going to fix it with a powered anode rod. Uh, the first thing we have to do, though, we have to shut the power off to this unit. Then we have to drain the tank to relieve some of the pressure. So let's get going. We got our power shut off. Now we're going to drain the tank to relieve some pressure. This should just be a quarter turn. Here we go. All right, so we're draining the hot water. Now we're going to shut the, the water coming in. We're going to shut this guy off. So we got the power shut off. We're draining water from the heat tank. And uh, a good idea is to turn a faucet on upstairs to relieve some pressure. I happen to have a valve up here. So I turn that on and that's releasing some pressure. And what makes this all even sweeter is that my 13 year old's taking a shower now. He slept in and he's taking a late shower. so. Uh, he's got no more hot water, so eh, that kind of sweetens the deal a little. So we're going to let this drain down a little, and then um, you may have uh, a different setup than this. This isn't a super common water heater, but uh, to access the anode rod, I have to take this top off. Um, yours may be, a, if you have a gas water heater or an electric one, uh, the accessibility will probably be a little bit easier, but um, this will be a little bit more difficult. I got to take this shroud off here. I got to take this cover off. Hey, oh, those were doing something. All right. Ah, let's take a look what we got. Yikes. So the location of the anode rod is that spot on the left. And the socket size we need to remove it is one and one sixteenth. To ensure that I didn't hurt anything inside the water heater, everything looked very expensive. I had to get an extension, so that's a foot long extension. And now I'm gonna try to remove it. And I should state, man, this thing was really in there. I don't really know how you could get enough leverage to twist that thing out of there. You would almost need two people. It makes it even harder with that extension. So I have a impact driver that's very powerful and that's what I use to remove this. So if you have access to one, I recommend you use it. So I moved it, but I'm gonna get it the rest of the way with this. That was really on there. Come on, little fingers. Okay, I got it. Yikes. Oh man, I can't believe this is what my thing looks like already. Hey. So I've been told I need a new uh, softener. It's not doing its thing. And I think they're right. This is a mess. I can't believe this is what it looks like after a couple months. Holy crap. Okay, now let's take a look at the new guy here. You can buy this at any box store. I, I bought it at one of them. I can't remember which one. So uh, these are on Amazon too. I'll put a link if you're interested. Let's take a look what this looks like. So our power supply, we don't need one. We're gonna use that guy up there. And I think the cord's 10 foot long. So we're gonna go from there. But we have our instruction manual. This is the power unit, I believe. Yep, that's our little power unit. And the anode rod should be in here, this little guy. I'll briefly explain how this works. A water heater can produce egg smelling water because bacteria grows in the tank and it reacts with the anode rod, creating hydrogen sulfide gas, which smells like rotten eggs. This electrical anode rod fixes this because electricity prevents the bacteria from growing and reacting, so the smell goes away. Installing it is really easy. We're gonna wrap the threads with a few pieces of plumber's tape. I like to add some plumbing thread sealant on as well, just for good measure. And then we just thread it back into where the old anode rod was. Tighten that with our hand. There we go, righty tighty. And just like the other one, we're gonna 
tighten it to 10 million foot pounds so nobody can get it out of there. Um, so yeah, let's tighten that up. And we're going to be careful. There's a little spot for our electrical connection. So we're going to tighten this and then not hurt that. I don't exactly know how we're going to do that, but we're going to do that. Maybe we'll just lar a different size. How could that be? So the old one's one and one sixteenth. What are you? One and three sixteenths. Oh my God. I don't know if I have that. All right. I got to go look to see if I have that. It's a miracle. So I happen to have one. One and three sixteenths. To take it out, it was one and one sixteenth. So I can't believe I happen to have that laying around. All right. Let's get you snugged up. Gently. With the anode rod secured, you don't have to get it as tight as they put it in the factory. I just snugged it up, and now I have to make a hole for that little electrical line. And I drilled a hole in the side, and then I put a little electrical connector in there so there's no sharp edges. There was really no way to fish that wire into my hot water heater. If you have a different hot water heater, it's going to be so much easier because the top's going to be accessible. So this one was definitely a little bit more tricky, but we were able to improvise and work around it. So we're going to plug this guy in. Plugged in. And I might... Might zip tie it to here or something so it's just not flopping around. And then out this guy. And that. And then this guy. We're going to secure up here to one of these screws. So let's do that. All right, we're going to put this top back on. Okay, we got the lid back on but we have to secure this ground. So we're just gonna put it through one of these uh, screw holes here. All right, so we got that on there. All right, we're gonna put the rest of the screws in. I'm gonna fill this up, then I'm gonna turn the water back on, and then I'll plug this in. But uh, first things first, I'm gonna fill the water back up and I'm gonna turn off, oh, that guy is off, that was bleeding. I'm gonna turn the water back on to the hot water tank. We're gonna fill the tank back up. Um, we want to bleed it though. So I'm going to open this up to bleed it. Oh yeah. So otherwise you could open up a valve upstairs like the sink, but you got to get rid of all that air. There's a bunch of air in the tank. So, um, once the tank fills up, water is going to come shooting out of here. All right, so the hot water tank, the water tank's full. All right, I'm gonna turn the power back on to it. This has a whole startup thing. Now I'm gonna plug this guy in to our outlet up here. Okay, so we're installed. You can hear my water tank is on and running. And if you notice, I have my little uh, wire up here that's running up. You know, if I really wanted, I could run another outlet over there and plug it in over there. It'd probably be a little bit neater install. Maybe I'll do that later, but I was really anxious not to have stinky water. So um, I'll give you an update, let you know how it's going, if that sulfur smell left. And uh, this thing's actually pretty nice. It said the only it said the only maintenance it needs is once a year, ensure that that green light is on. So as long as that green light is on, then it's working properly. And I'll just show you how I ran the wire. I'm just making sure that it's not touching any sharp metal. You know, it's a low voltage wire and uh, it goes right in here. So again, I don't, maybe it's a better idea to mount uh, an outlet here. Maybe I'll do that in the future, but uh, yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. While I give the update on how this thing works, I thought it'd be nice to watch me struggle trying to remove the old anode rod. So the egg water smell went away almost instantly. I was surprised at how well this thing works. I'm really surprised that water heaters don't come with these to begin with. 
I'll put a link in the description if you want to buy it yourself. It's about 150 bucks, money well spent. Thanks for watching.